Hey guys, so we're going to be going through how to set some different functions for these lamps that we've made. Um, and that's important too because it's going to be teaching you guys about firstly functions, but then also about lots of different variables that we're going to need to be using for this. Um, so you can see here, using the same project that we've been using for this whole time um, and making some dimmers. So you can see how this is going to be pretty... Um, functional in lots of different aspects of games in terms of what dimness to have the light so we need to be focused on two different points um, intensity so what intensity level are we going to want the light to change to um, how long is it going to take that light to change to that um, so the next thing we actually have to do is create an algorithm to ramp the intensity of light up or down um, this will require some animation code that will execute on each frame so it's is quite a little bit within this and we're going to be spending lots more time in the blueprint um, area than we have previously so um, what we're going to be doing so um, to need to set up the properties with the function that control the um, animation and we're creating the sorry we're creating the animation code that will animate our blueprint over time based on the properties set up by the function call okay so calling in the animation so that means that anything that moves or changes with time, e.g. a moving object, or in our case, intensity of light, um, ramping up or down, okay? So, first thing first we need to do is create some variables, okay? And we're creating them within our lamp post, so opening that up, and we need to make some variables. So, the first one we need to do is make a boolean, which is, so, that is over here, so it's the red one. And we're going to name that appropriately, and we're going to name that changing. All right. And then we're gonna name, uh, create another variable. And we're gonna name that start intensity. Start intensity. We're gonna name the next one target intensity. Right. We're gonna name the next one the time period. Cool, we've got time period uh, and then lerp factor. Cool. All right, now you can see I wasn't changing those as we go because I thought it'd be easier to change them at the end. And they are all, except for the first one, going to be floats. Fantastic. Cool. So we've got all of our um, different variables that we need to look like. So it should your screen should be looking like this. Also, um, next step that we need to be doing is creating our function. Um, so staying in this blueprint, we can go over to function um, and creating function there. All right, you can see there it's created a new window as well. So event graph there, new function, viewport, got that there. Okay, so we need to name that new function set intensity. All right. Cool, so after we've got that function, uh, we're going to be moving down to blah, 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 blah. All right, inputs and outputs. We're going to start adding some new things. So we're going to add a new parameter to this. Okay, and it needs to be a... <coughs> sorry. A new parameter is going to be intensity, because that's what we're doing. Um, and we need to change it to a float. All right, fantastic. So we've got those there. Same process, we're gonna be adding a couple more, uh, another one as well. So we add another input and it's gonna be called time period. And that's also gonna be a float. All right, so we've got our time period as well. So you can notice as well that these have both come up onto our um, viewport graph as well. So now what we need to actually start doing is setting these intensities. Um, so what we can do is actually drag from the target intensity um, variable and we can set it as a set node. We can set it like that and then joining these ones up again. Remembering white to white, green to green, um, and we're setting the intensity. Okay. Um, the next one, thing we're going to do is same thing. We're setting the um, <coughs> we're setting the time period. Okay, so setting the time period, set the time period, and then same thing as well, we can leave, might put down a little bit, just so we can connect that a little bit easier. We don't really want the um, the lines running through the um, 
running through the nodes, okay? Um, next step is, and for that what we're going to be doing is, so we now need to figure out the starting intensity of our light. So I can drag off of the point light there, that gives us a reference point for that. And if I get off that, and I can type in get, oh, not with a H though, get intensity, and that will give us that node there, okay? So getting there a little bit, I actually need to move these down just to here. Okay, so now what we're doing is getting through and we need to set our intensity as well. Okay, so we're getting a, so we need to actually start intensity, sorry, I shouldn't have typed that in. So we can just drag that off, it's way easier. So we can set that here. So if I go there, and then we can attach this to that. Okay, cool. So now we've kind of got, so we've got, so we're trying, we've got our function setting our intensity, we've got our start intensity, we've got the time period, um, we're then setting the point light as our start intensity. Okay. Um, we then need to make this changing, so this is kind of works in with our lerp factor. Okay. So the next node that we're going to do is getting with our, um, okay, so what we're going to be doing is saying that this is changing. So if I get the change here, um, and we're setting changing, sweet, that goes to there, and we want it to be changing. Okay, and then, so this kind of moves in with our let factor, so that's shorthand for um, linear interpolation. Okay, and this is widely used in graphics and animation. So typically, a lerp factor, lerp factor, sorry, um, just is a variation between zero and one, um, and is used to compute an interpolation between those two values. So um, we're going to be using that as an on-off kind of thing for our light. Okay. So what we now need to be adding is a branch. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Let's move over. We're going to make a branch. Okay, cool. So condition is going to be uh, is it greater than nope, it's less than. Alright, I need to make sure I get the right one. Sorry. Uh, so that's going to be a float. Sorry, that is a float. That's that bad boy there. We're going to go with our time period. Which I keep, like, lots of the time, what I do is type them in because you use lots of other nodes, but because in this tutorial it's so set, it's a lot easier to just drag them off, um, which I need to get used to. Uh, set, true. We need to set the alert factor as well here. So essentially, it's going to be having a 1 and a 0. And that's setting our alert factor. So it's going to set our value there. Um, and greater than over here as well is our condition. Okay. So you can kind of see here we've made our long branch of code. Um, so then the next step will be writing the animation code that will use the variable set up by the function to actually animate the intensity of the light over time. Okay, so what we need to be doing is we're going to be actually setting a event tick. So we can use the event tick for that and we're going to use it on this blueprint. Um, but we're going to use it in our event graph. Okay, and so you can see there, the beauty of using event graphs is... Can I... I'll leave them there. That's probably good so you guys can actually read what they are. Okay, cool. So you see here that it gives us an event tick, gives us an event actor begin overlap, and it gives us a bit, um, sorry, event begin play. Um, so a crucial aspect of any animating animation program is what's known as delta time. This is the amount of time that has elapsed between the current frame and the previous um, frame, previous time. The delta time is provided by the event tick node. So you can see that one down the bottom. Um, also, almost all game engines, Unity, CryEngine, and many others provide this value. Okay, so it's always going to be the same kind of amount of time. 
because it is usually needed to write animation code, this is a frame rate independent. We'll use it to, we will be using it ourselves shortly so that we can animate our light over the time previously that we have specified. Without using delta time, this light would ramp up faster than the frame rate, which is um, which is higher and vice versa. Okay, so it's keeping in a certain, um, certain time, so it's not going above our frame rate. Okay, so we're back on our event graph, but our event tick. Now let's start chucking some code in. All right, so what we need to be doing is adding a branch node. All right, we've got our branch node, and our condition is going to be changing. Because I dragged that off of there, that's why I only got get changing, um, not set changing. Okay. So from here, what we need to be doing in adding to our true pin, and we're going to be setting our alert factor. Okay, but that alert factor is dependent on a lot of other things that we want to be changing around it. So we need to come down from this one here. Float, let me go that one. We need a float there, and so we need to add our alert factor. Okay, so that's our value just there that we've created. Um, we need to actually divide this though by our delta seconds because that's what's happening. So we're actually making that change as opposed to the amount of frames that it's taking to do it. Okay, so we need to go float again. Not being very good at typing today, am I? And we need our division. And so that goes to here. And we need a time period because it's getting our time. It'd be easier for this one if I just drag it off. All right, so we get our time period. So what this does is divide the time period by the delta section to get the amount that we need to add onto the alert factor so that it changes from zero to one over the time period without being affected by the frame rate. Okay, we now calculate the actual linear interpolation of the light intensity to produce the actual value that we need into the light. Interpolation is a very common operation in games programming and as you'd expect, Unreal Engine provides us with a node to carry out the calculation for us. All right, so again, game pro, uh, the game engine, looking after us really well. So right clicking over here, type in lerp, um, and we need to get uh, lerp one, there. All right, cool, so now we've got our node, um, we need to actually start adding to this. So we've got A, B, we actually need to add it over there, I might move it under it. So just keeping these a little bit separate so we can do this. So we need our start intensity, we need our target intensity, um, we then need our power, okay? So if we get a start intensity, we then need to get our target intensity. Whoops. So I'm just trying to keep it all together so it's not too far apart. Um, we then need our power. Cool. All right, I'm going to change the three exponent of that to three. Um, so we've changed that. So what this does is change the shape of the curve used to interpolate between A and B. We ha if had we just plugged alert factor into the alpha pin directly, we'd get a linear interpolation, which means the value will change in direct proportion to the alpha value. This actually doesn't work very well for light intensity which don't vary in a linear fashion. Using a power node raises the number plugged into the base pin by the power of the value plugged in the exponent pin. This is base result equals base um, with um, exponent. This gives us better looking result for light intensity. Later when you have the blueprint working, you can experiment by plugging the alert factor directly in the alpha pin of the alert node to see the difference. Um, that'd be really good. Okay, so next bit is setting the alert factor, we need a branch. Continuing this on. So now we actually need to set the intensity of the light. So dragging from this one, we're gonna add a branch. Okay, and we need to have the condition, we're gonna go float. And it's gonna be float, one there, 
equals less than that one there have that set to one okay so what's going to happen if the float equals um, less than one all right so we're going to set our intensity over here set in point we sorry so you, you can do that so I think I showed you before you can grab both and I do that by accident all the time so I'm gonna have that point light down there because I only need one of those nodes um, and we're gonna set set intensity again uh, but I'm gonna delete that okay and if that's false we're gonna set the intensity there Okay, so what we're doing with this is um, actually setting what we're going to have that to. So target intensity is what we're going to have if it's true. All right, but if it's false, we're going to start adding in our alert factor, okay, which we already have programmed down here. So if I drag this over into a better spot, I can plug that in. Okay, and so that's going to be using our start intensity, target intensity, and our lerp factor, um, which our power, sorry, um, to actually move that through gradually. Okay, one last thing that we, um, we and then we're done. Um, so we need to set the changing value so we've actually finished that on to the upper intensity. Okay, because we don't want it to keep changing, do we? Okay, we want it to be all right, so it's, it's made it to that target intensity. Um, and I'm going to leave it on that. And this time we're going to have changing unticked. Um, and so that should be all set. And your code should look something like this. I'm going to double check all this and just run through it. So I went tick to the branch, changing, set that. All right, cool. So now we've created our function to set the target intensity of our lamppost and the animation code to go with it. So we've got our animation code and we've got our function. All right, cool. The last thing we need to do for this to work, we'll switch the level blueprint and write some code that will carry out the set intensity function that we'll do in two things. So when the level first starts, set the intensity of our lamp post to zero, so it's not going to be on. All right, and then call our set function when we press the one key. All right, because everything needs to actually have a way to actually start to engage. Okay, so we've got our lamp post in our level. All right, and we're actually going to move through to our level. I'm going to compile, save, and then we're going to get out of this. We're going to make sure our lamp post is selected, and we're going to open up our level blueprint. Okay, and you can see in here we've actually got our code in here still from when we were um, when we were working on our um, starting point. All right, so we've got our event begin play. And we need to create a lamppost. Create reference to lamppost. So just like we did with these other ones, we're creating our reference to our lamppost. I'm just going to make sure we separate this up nicely because I want to keep that. Um, but I also want to have our lamppost code being put in now as well. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we're actually going to be cut setting intensity but I want it to be for a lamp post and we're calling our function see that's the difference there so we've actually target is lamp post as opposed to on the other one we had it with our point light okay so we've got that attached um, next thing we need to do is so we've got our target there and that's attached there, cool. All right, so now what we're doing is connecting our event begin play. All right, and now what we need to do, so we don't actually have a way of triggering this just yet. Whoops. Oh, I forget that you can't have both of these running at the same time. So what we might actually do, sequence. Add a sequence node in. So we can have this happen, 
and then this happened. All right, cool. So we've got that there. All right, so what we'll do, we'll compile, save, and if I press play, you'll notice that I fall through the floor. Okay, so now, stop falling through my floor, but as you can see, they look pretty well the same as before because we've just we haven't actually set a number to our intensity that we're setting it to. Okay, we've got all the moving parts, um, but no numbers going into them just yet. So if I escape out of that, um, and what we need to now be adding is the um, <coughs> sorry, we actually need to be adding um, actions into this. So I need to go here, and when you go keyboard. Like I said before, we're adding a keyboard event where we use the number one. So when we press that, what's going to happen? All right, and what we're going to do is actually set the intensity of our light. Okay, um, and so we can get rid of this now and add that back over there. So when it's pressed, target is the lamp post. We're going to set the intensity, so time period 10, and set the intensity to a million. All right, just because I like saying that number. All right, so now if you play the level. Oh, sorry guys. Really quickly though, just realized that I didn't really give you enough time to look at the light lighting up, and also I forgot to put the alert factor in there. And there was one more thing that I forgot to add, and it was to add the actual change, um, 0 0.001. So now when I press play, sorry, because I already had I had the blue light, it's sometimes hard to see it light up. So if I press 1 now, you can see that it slowly lights up to a million brightness over 10 seconds. So it gradually does that, and then stays at that value. So hopefully this has helped. I'm sorry that I missed those two things. You guys would have been very confused with why it's not working. Um, hopefully you made it to the end of the video and um, was able to fix those mistakes. So see you in the next one.